Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University. And uh, this is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And today is uh, Thursday, November 18th, uh, 2021. And we're gonna do a little uh, perspective tutorial, two point perspective tutorial. And it's actually based after this great illustrator named, forget his last name, but his, his first name rather, his last name is Hustley. So this is a, a, an adaptation of his tutorial uh, that he had online. Um, okay, so what we'll do is we'll draw a perspective of this object, um, this stepped uh, horseshoe shape. And uh, the goal is to find to, to draw this at the end, just clean and on the page and be um, on, on a separate piece of, of trace. Okay, but to do that, we'll need to construct it. So I'll go through the uh, drawings first. And then I'll, I'll go through a model that I built and I'll basically walk you through the model almost like, you know, almost like a real walkthrough, except it's not really virtual reality. It's more like model reality. And then I will do the drawing, okay? Uh, so, so yeah, this is how the final assignment will look like. Of course, I want you to do the, uh, construction because otherwise there's no way this this drawing is actually um, not when I learn a full scale so because I don't want you to like just trace it okay um, it's going to be slightly different sizes if you're going to do option one and option two option one uses a large sheet that you have to tape together two sheets to to come with it to to make it up um, and um, and option two actually if you can print a page that is about this size, you can draw directly on that, okay? This one is in millimeters, the double page large one is in inches and there's instructions and you have to draw it from scratch, okay? And for the video now, what I'll do though, rather than draw, um, than drawing this model, which is has you know the step and has the horseshoe shape, um, we'll, I'll show you uh, how to do the simple box first which would mean, um, you know, the enclosure that, it, that this one fits in, okay? And you'll see in a second, I made a model because what's happening in a drawing like this, uh, you have lots of things overlapping each other because you have, I'm gonna now label this. I think this will be good. So we start getting the um, sort of the terminology, okay? Now, if you recall, in the previous assignment, it was easier because it would just had one vanishing point, right? And you were pla you placed yourself, say there, and then it was just a matter of determining where the stop backstop line was. Um, so this is a little more complicated because there is two vanishing points, right? So the object is not facing straight. Um, in other words not placed like that and you're looking at it and you will be looking inside rather it's placed at an angle okay um, so let me just describe what what the parts are okay and this is true for any perspective um, you have a station point which is where you're standing okay and now the dimensions by the way are in the um well, again, if you're doing the large one, there'll be, there's a, a handout for that. If you're doing the smaller one, uh, which is actually pre-printed, uh, those are actually in millimeters and it will look like this, okay? So it will have spelled out where everything is. Um, so then we have in this, in this particular setup, we have this, this line here, which is called the picture plane. And I'm gonna repeat all these things. Um, okay. Oops. Picture plane. Okay. And if you, now this is gonna be out of focus here, but if you look at my model, that's the picture plane right here, this big thing. Okay. Um, looking at it from above. Then we have, well, we have the object and the object is placed in such a way that it's convenient. We use 30 and 45 and 30 and 60. So we use our triangles to set up, 
So it's very important that you have um, the 30, 60 triangle, okay? Can't see it here. Well, you can see it here, the 30, 60 one, okay? You can use the 45 too, but that's just for the verticals. Um, because then we place the object using exactly that angle, okay? This angle, the, the small one here and the larger one here to place that object. Uh, it's just convenient, okay? And it's touching, the object is actually touching the picture plane, okay? So that's also convenient because what that means is that it's gonna be touching that glass. And so that edge, okay, that's touching that glass is gonna be a real dimension, which is gonna be useful to build up the, build up the shape. Um, what we need to figure out is where the vanishing points are. So I'm going to abbreviate this for right vanishing point and left vanishing point. And in a second in the model, we'll see more clearly how that is determined. But in the drawing, what you do is you draw a line parallel to the edge of the, of the object, okay? So in other words, that's, you know, this would be my, my angle, right? So what I wanna do is I move my triangle this way until I hit the station point and I project the line onto that plane. And I do the same on this side, uh, which would be, yeah, like that. Okay, so I move these across, All right? I should be using the other triangle here so I stay straight. And then I get this other spot. And that's just to find what we're going to call either diagonal or distance points. Okay. And once you find those, you kind of want to forget about, meaning once you find them, you bring them down ver uh, vertically. Okay. And then they're going to hit this thing called the horizon line. Okay, and if you remember, the horizon line is you looking straight ahead, and then the line that crosses that spot of you looking straight ahead is the horizon line. And depending on how high it is, you might be above the object, right? So right now, if this was my ground, I could be looking at this and I'm slightly over above it. And that's how we're going to do the drawing. But we could also be, you know, lower, in which case you wouldn't see the top at all, right? Or you could be very high above it, like a bird's eye view, in which case you would see a lot of the top. In our case, it's this difference. This is the person. Okay, that's how tall it is because this line down here, I forgot, it's called the ground line. Okay, or GL, and we can call this HL. And this is called picture plane. Um, so that's your height, right? I'm sorry, that's your height. I take it back. Um, in other words, if this is your head, it's looking at the horizon line and it's sitting on the ground, okay? Um, and then the other thing that's important is the, dis the distance, how far you are from the picture plane, which remember is your drawing. So in this case, it's so much. And everything is spelled out in millimeters, okay? But we'll... we'll um, We'll do that when I actually do the drawing, okay? So that's the setup. Um, once you have your vanishing points, anything that's in the object going this way, all these lines will go to the right and all these lines will go to the left, okay? Because if you recall parallel lines, like in a, in a railroad track, you know, they converge in one spot, right? And they converge in infinity, That's that's what they said, mathematicians, I still don't get it, but visually looks like that, right? They converge, but you know, they'd never converge. Anyway, um, so then what will happen is we'll do this. And just to remember this now, I'll, I'll, I'll go over the model again. We draw also the elevation on the left here, and that's just to get the height and we put it on the ground so that actually the line here is missing so that we can simply project um, 
that height, but it's just a, a convenience because I could just measure it. Since I know it's touching the glass, I could just measure it here. And I get my very first edge here. Remember, this is just a straight cubic thing, right? For now. Um, so because that's touching, I can say, oh, that's exactly what I say it is. And I can draw it the way it is, which in this case is three centimeters. Once I have that, then I immediately connect the vanishing points to that bar right here, okay? So I immediately connect it there and I immediately connect this and I get the two front faces, okay? Like that, from there and from there. But now the big question is, well, okay, that's all nice and good, but what about these two sides, right? How big are those? Like, where are they? And this is the one thing you'll just have to remember. And if you use this method, it will always work. The way you find that is you draw a line from your object. Let's do it this way. And let me get another pencil. You draw a line from the corner of your object. Now it's gonna be a little bit blocked, but where it crosses the picture plane, Okay, you draw another line going down. And now that that intersects, now I need another pen. Um, this guy, okay, you can't, it's a little hard to see, but let me try a lighter pencil. Okay, this cross right there is now my, my um, left edge. So let's repeat that. You draw a line from your, from your corner to the station point where it intersects the picture plane. You draw a vertical line and what that intersects the other vanishing lines, you get your edge. And once you do that for both sides, then to get the back corner is easy because you can then draw more vanishing lines. Although you can still find it doing the same method, okay? So now that's a little bit, tricky here because we have the ground plane, we have the picture plane, we have the horizon line. So there's a lot of, there's at least two things which are more like that, but they're all on the same plane. Uh, and that's now doing the model, I'll show you what, how that works out, okay? So the, the advantage of using the smaller version, because you have option twos again, option two, two options. The advantage of using the, uh, the, the, the smaller one is that it's already set up in a drawing and you can draw directly on this. You know, the setup is already there and you can basically just draw the perspective here based on everything else. The disadvantage is it's a little bit smaller, but not that much, it turns out. So, um, so it's up to you. Okay, I like working bigger if I can, but then if you work bigger on two sheets, you have to basically redraw these parts, which is okay. It's not that much, okay? Um, yeah, just to show again, before I, even, before I even showed the model, what I mean by the parts you know, overlapping is this. So this is not the complete drawing, not of the cube, but of the actual thing. But, um, so the ground line, where you're standing is also this entire area, right? Because of course you can see that's the ground, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a top view it's, and so forth. So in our drawing, you know, this is the ground, right? This drawing shows, shows the ground, what do we draw on the ground? Um, this part of the drawing is actually what we draw on the picture plane, right? So it's basically this plane, right? But we, we kind of drop it down and we make it, you know, we make it because it's convenient, right? We don't need to, we, we don't want to do a 3D drawing because we need a regular drawing, right? Um, and the difference um, you'll see in the model is that whereas here, these lines that drop down after these intersections are found come down from above. In the model, you'll see that actually come down from the ground line, okay? But anyway, just, just keep in mind, it's a combination of different things all on the same sheet, okay? Do 
your drawing will look, you know, of your object finally will look like this after you have, after you have found the box, then the other parts um, are found, you know, using the same method um, to get these details for the actual, you know, the actual shape. Yeah, so once again, do the whole construction and I want you to turn that in too and then do a second one, which at school we had nice, nice vellum paper, which is transparent, but also very nice as opposed to the tracing paper, but tracing paper is okay. Um, but let me, let me show you the model again. And this is new, so this you won't find in the, uh, uh, in the old video, in any of the old videos. So this is, this is pretty good because I think it really, I'll have to improve it and make these bars here transparent too so I don't get these big shadows. But let me just show you how I made it so that we can sort of do a walkthrough. So basically what I did was I, you know, I took a piece of board, I created a slit at the, in the middle here, and then with these two bars to, to hold it, and it's a piece of plexiglass. And I actually, because I knew that the drawing is pretty true to like, that's how it works, right? I mean, if you do a drawing like that, it's precise, it's kind of mathematical in a way. But the question was, how, how do you show it? Like, how do you know, right? Because yeah, it looks right, but what if it's wrong or, you know? So I, I literally built both the, um, okay, so you can see from this view that the picture plane has, a, and right now, unfortunately, it's a little dark, but I, I drew the, the perspective drawing both on the picture plane and also on the ground here, and I tried to split the parts, okay? So, and then what I did was I, I created this little pipe with, hold on, I have to tighten my, my strings here, going through this little thing there. Um, so what I'll do is now is I'll just do like a, I don't know, some kind of like a drone view or something so that you can, you can visualize how it's, how it's happening. Okay. Yeah, and I'll keep this here so that you can see, you know, what we're what we're looking at. at. All right. So imagine that there is like, you know, a laser head or whatever, you know, this is the person right here. Okay, that's the person, a little pipe. Um, let me just focus. I'll just focus on the picture plane, okay? Of course, now it doesn't look right, right? The reason nothing looks right is because the camera, right? Right here, the eye of the camera is gonna have to be here. That's my view, right? So eventually we'll see, we'll get there. But let me just explain again how, so remember how we, we found the first spot was that we, um, okay, we found it this way, the first vanishing point, we drew a line that was parallel, parallel to the object, right? But the question is, how do you draw it? I mean, you know, like there's, you know, it's all in space, right? So we draw it instead on the ground, okay, right there. And by the way, I was trying to figure out like, how did they find it this way? Why is that? And I think it's because if you can imagine that you have sets of parallel lines and there's maybe a building on one side and a building on the other, and you're in the middle of the street and you look straight ahead and you know the parallel lines will meet at that point. They're like, oh, okay. That's, if I look straight ahead, that's where all those parallel lines are gonna go to, right? But because I can't, you know, from my head shoot a laser gun and hit that, line, what I do instead is I can try to draw a line on the ground like this, okay? And then I bring it up, okay? And that's the funny thing that in the, in the model, you draw this line from the viewer to the picture plane, and then you go up, 
Whereas in the drawing, you're actually going down, but that's just the way, you know, the way things work, right? Okay, you see that? So in the drawing, we're drawing that line and then we drop it down because in our setup, the, um, it, it, it's because in our setup, the, uh, the person's height happens to be, we, well, it happens, the relationship of the distance of the person to the plane and everything else, it just so happens that we have to draw the line down. If we were much higher, we would be going up, right? So the thing to remember though, is that regardless, we draw that line and then we bring it in, the, in our case down on our drawing, but in reality, we would be bringing it up to the horizon line, okay? So that's how we find those spots. And we do the same on the other side, of course, right? So we bring this spot, we bring it up until it hits the horizon line, okay? And then what you see there is basically the construction and all these lines um, just show that that construction, that drawing that you're gonna do would be the equivalent if you took a drill and you, if you like drew on a window all the spots of that object without doing any perspective drawing, just like literally drawing on the window what you see, those corners, you could theoretically have these lines, right? These threads that go from the object to your eye. And remember, you only have one eye. We're all like one-eyed in this, like pirates, um, because perspective works with just one eye. Um, and so I was really curious because of like, oh my God, is this really going to work? Because I built one a long time ago but I kind of remember that it worked, but I didn't do it as elaborate as this one. So I did, and I made it match, of course, and I put my object, again, if you look at it from above, um, right? It's matching my, my setup, right? Okay, so the lines are straight. Stay there, okay. Um, Oh, the other thing you can see though here, and this is actually pretty cool. Uh, these are gonna be out of focus now, but you can see that these lines that we draw here, remember how we find this, which is really the critical point. We find that by drawing a line from the object to the station point and where it crosses the picture plane, we draw a line right down here. That's how we find these edges, but you can see that these lines are four lines, but the, it's called a parallelepiped, believe it or not, which is like an elongated cube. It has eight points, not just four, right? So these lines do double duty, meaning they work for the bottom part and also for the top part. And you can see why that would be the case. There is perspective here, so it's a little, it's a little hard to see these, in theory, you would be able to see only four lines, right? But because, because we have a perspective, even in this 3D model, you're seeing more, but that's what, what that is, okay? Um, so these lines that we draw represent all those wires, okay? All those things, all these things that are going to every, every spot. And, um, and at some point, because I made it out of cardboard, my cube in the back there, I was like, oops, what about that corner in the back, right? Because that one, and this is just a little bit of, yeah. So I said, uh-oh, what am I gonna do with the, with the back corner here? Because that, that wire, it has to go through the front wall, right? So I actually had to, when I did all the others, I had to find, where that spot was, let's see, yeah, right there. By literally like looking straight ahead and then poking a hole there. Anyway, now, um, when we're all finished, we get this drawing. And so now how do we know that that's correct? Well, you can actually, like you do with your cube for the previous drawing and also for the other one that we're gonna do after we come back, you can actually approximate the drawing, even though we're much bigger than the object and we can pretend that we're small and you can actually look, you know, 
inside okay and i can say okay how you know where is it so with this guy i can kind of let me see if i can yeah just like no this is better yeah and then say okay where am i you know relative to that drawing and see if it if it looks correct okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to um So let me step back for a moment about the, the previous drawing, which we haven't looked at, right? If you're, what you wanna do is when you draw it, in other words, trust your, your eye too a little bit and it's this, right? So once you know where that horizon line is and where the vanishing point is, you could literally look into it and say, oh, okay, no, it's, it's not this way because that would be off and it's not this way. It's like inside. And you can try to just basically arrange the view, right? So that you match. So in other words, right now, what I would be doing is I'll be, if I can get the center of the screen here, that would be the correct, because my camera now is in the center of my screen. And so if I go away, right, that's a little hard. Um, so roughly that's, you know, that's, that's my view, right? So um, later on, when we do two point perspective of this, um, you know, that's something. And by the way, I hope it was clear that, you know, you had to, um, you had to uh, open up your, your cube with what I call the barn door or a big door. Uh, so now what I'll do is I'll lower the camera and I'll bring the camera right up to this guy right here, okay? And pretend that literally that guy, that the camera is that guy or the, the guy is the, the camera, whatever. Um, what will happen, unfortunately, is that as I get very close, this thing is actually pretty thick and it should in theory disappear, right? But it's there. But you'll see that it's actually not bad. So let me um, tighten again the screw, the, the wires here. Okay. And now I have to prop it up because again my my the arms of my camera can't quite go back enough. Okay. So let's let's review it once again, and now I'm going to look at the uh, at the specs. Okay, I can find it. By the way, when you work on your drawing, you could do this too. You could take the printout, and if you didn't want to like write directly on the printout, you could put a piece of trace and work like that, you know, so that you can see what the construction is. Um, so, but let's, um, yeah, so this would be you or a person that's five centimeters high or let's just say five feet, let's say. Um, and then these are all the other dimensions, okay, in millimeters. Um, and these are all the, the distances where you're, where you're supposed to put everything. So you can see from this that the height is, uh, yeah, five centimeters, okay? And the horizon, the, um, and then the distance of the person um, to the, uh, to the picture plane is 10.5 centimeters or 105 millimeters, okay? So that's this one. So this is, let's say five centimeters or let's say five feet, that's 10 and a half centimeters or let's say 10 and a half feet, okay? Um, and so this would be six feet by three feet or three centimeters by six centimeters. So now I want to check and see if this view, if this person's view in that location, which is the station point, is really going to give me uh, my drawing. Okay, and believe it or not, it's actually pretty close, which I was like, okay, wow, I guess geometry works. Um, so what, what I have to do is I have to have 
basically the person. Okay, now you can see it's already getting there, right? Um, so right now what I've done is I've got the, uh, the head, oops. Something got a little loose there. Anyway, I've got the head of my, my person here aligned with the aligned with the horizon line, right? And that's what I want, right? The horizon line is my head. Um, and also I'm looking straight, exactly straight at the object, right? Okay, sorry. I'm really messing up here. Let me just make sure. There we go. Okay. And I'm a little, I'm a little high. Okay, so you can see that the construction is sort of there, but obviously not correct. And the reason it's not correct right now, it doesn't match is because I'm not actually standing in the spot where this guy's standing. So what I need to do is I need to be that person, right? So let's see it, see how that works. Now, because this guy's too thick, it's gonna get you know in the way, but you can see it's already already better, right? And I'm gonna actually go as far as I can. I have to look at it and I'm gonna to try to hit it. And also keep my head in the horizon, right? So let's see, come on. And how about that? Look at that. Now this is, this is not really right because you can see my viewer is off to the left now, right? but it's closed. So actually this will be correct. Sorry, this, this thing is, I have to use a little prop here to keep it from moving. But so this would be the correct view, right? Because now the head is, yeah, it's very close and you can see it's matching. And not, I know that it's very close because uh, if I move slightly to the right, you can see it's pretty close. And if I move slightly to the left, it's a little bit off on that side. So that's it. I mean, it's not bad because you can see that that simple construction, by the way, it works because the camera, this camera is probably close to the cone of vision of our, of our normal view. So it's not a, a distorted fisheye lens, you know, wide angle lens, nor it's a tele lens, right? If you're familiar with all cameras, uh, it's kind of like an average lens, more or less matching matching your, your eyes. Um, so that's it. Um, this is pretty neat because it shows that that construction works. Um, and let me just show once again what, um, what I was saying earlier about um, how we drop the lines down, but in the actual model, we, move, we drop them up. I mean, move them up. Remember? So in our drawing, we draw these lines, and sorry, we draw these lines. And then when they hit the picture plane, sorry, you can't really see it, but you drop them down. But here, when these lines, the only, the only place, the only reference that I have is actually on the ground. So actually in order to get that line, I have to draw it up. Uh, but this is in, 3D, so you don't have to worry since you're doing everything in 2D. So this is the end of yeah part one, I guess. Uh, 